Hello there and welcome. My name is Michael Fudge and this is yet another SQL screencast. This screencast will talk about the join clause in the SQL select statement. Now as you already know the SQL select statement retrieves data from a table so I can type something like this to list out the basketball players that I might have in my league, let's say. So this is my sample basketball league. And I can also also list out the teams in my league. So let me just expand this out a bit and you'll see that I have five players, three teams. Um, this player Fudge does is not on a team. Um, and this particular team, the Stinkers, uh, has no players on it because you either play for Team 100 or Team 101, and this is Team 102. So this small little example will hopefully demonstrate the different ways that tables can be joined together and maybe get you a better, to better understand uh, the rationale behind uh, each of the different join techniques. So to start out, let's begin with the um, most natural of joins, um, the inner join. For example, you might want to know which players play for which team. So you can say select from BB player uh, join BB team on player team ID equals team ID. Now before I, I run this, let's just talk a whisker about this. You're saying give me all the columns from this table, join it with this table where this on is like in, a, in effect saying under the conditions where the player's team ID from the player table matches up with the team ID from the team table. So what happens when players and teams don't match up, they just don't get shown. So for example, I have Jordan on Team 100, Bulls, O'Neal on Team 101, Lakers, Pippen on Team 100, Bulls, Bryant on Team 101, Lakers. And if we look back at the original tables, there's four rows in the query output, but the original table has five rows in it. Um, so we are, we are missing Fudge, who's a player, and we are missing Stinkers the team. And the reason we're missing those is because of the join condition that says show me everything from these two tables where this condition matches. By the way, this is called SQL 92 syntax. In the in the olden days, we write this equivalent uh, SQL statement like this under SQL 89 syntax. BB player comma BB team where um, player team uh, ID equals team ID. We'd, we'd write the equivalent uh, SQL like this in SQL 89 syntax and you get the same output. It's interesting to note that the, the reason that this is a, a preferred and better method is you're, you're doing the logic at the table join level which leaves you the ability to add the where clause into the statement if you want to further sort this and say well um, I only want to show where their um, player name is like Jordan right I can run this statement here execute it and whoop, I gotta do this right. There we go, I get Jordan. And if I were gonna do the same thing down here, the where clause becomes a little more complicated. I gotta say where the team ID and the player team ID match and player name like Jordan. So you can see that the the where clause gets a little mucked up. Um, from the fact that we have some join logic in here and we also have just our regular filter logic occurring. So there's a, cl a clear separation in the above syntax of the join logic which is here 
from the filter logic, which is here. Bottom example brings up another interesting point, and that that is, um, what if we were to join these things? What if we were to join these things just like so? What would we get? If you do that, you get what's called a, a cross join, and a cross join is really just a complete enumeration of all the rows in one table with all the rows in the other table. For example, if you look at the output, there's 15 rows here. And what we're seeing is an enumeration of every combination of player with team. Not very useful in this particular circumstance, but there are there are times where there 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 could be valid va valid applications of of this type of join logic. In SQL 89 that's how you do it in 92 you would say from BB player cross join BB team like that and it gives you the same results. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about um, outer join logic and why you might need outer join logic. Now outer joins allow you to do things like see all the table, all the players, even the ones that aren't on a team, or see all the teams, including the teams without players. So let me kind of show you how this works first. I can say select everything from player um, left join BB team on player team ID equals team ID. The left join says include all the rows from the left table, even the ones that, that don't match up with this because of null. So if I execute this, oops, if I execute this, I get all the players, those matched up with the teams, and then me, the guy without a team, it's just null in the team section. So again, what left join is saying is on the left table, show me all the all the real rows out of the left table. Okay, even the ones where they don't match up because they're null. If I were to change this to a right join, now what happens is it shows all the teams. So now what I'll see is stinkers. And I do. You see, I, all the players that come, that are matched up with teams are, are shown. And only the team with no player shows up over here. That's a right join. The left and the right don't matter as much as um, where the table is. So for example, if I were to flip these and put um, BB team here and BB player here, BB team right join BB player is the same as BB player left join BB team. It's the same same thing. So now you'll see I see fudge back in here. It's just the column orders are a little different. But uh, the point is that left or right, it doesn't matter. What matters is if you say left join, it's the left table that you're going to see all the rows from. If you say right join, it's the right table you're going to see all the rows from. But you really you could use left or right join. So now comes the last case where you might want to see um, not only the, all the players that don't have teams, but all the teams that don't have players. And that would be a full join. When you do a full join, what you'll get is, you know, players that obviously match up with teams. And then you'll also get teams with no players and players with no teams. So this additional join logic um, really helps you determine um, very uh, specific circumstances. Like if you're trying to find specific players without teams or teams. Um, without players and include that in the output of players with teams. Well, I hope that clears the muddy waters of how the join clause works, especially with regards to outer joins and how they include data from tables that um, are null across the join. Thank you for joining for the screencast and hope to see you again.